I can't even keep a straight face. This review is gonna suck. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the Mothman Jones Movie Channel. I'm your host, John Mafio, and today's featured review, I swore it on Valentine's Day, so that's why it's getting a late review, Fifty Shades Darker. It's the sequel to the original adaptation based on a book that was written for Twilight fan fiction, became a big craze in America and the world, and we're getting movies now, because yay! And we got Anastasia Steele and Christian Grey, who are now in a relationship and they're dating. That's the story! Also, Anastasia Steele, who's played by Dakota Johnson, her boss is really coming on to her hard. And he really wants to come on her hard! Get it? So yeah, if you aren't acquainted with Fifty Shades, basically at the end of the last movie, Anastasia Steele, who was an intern, who interviewed Christian Grey, who Christian Grey, he had a thing for dominance and submissives. He wanted her to be his new submissive, so then she was like, okay, they have sex a couple times, and then she's like, nah, I don't like this, because you spanked me five times. This is too much for me! Oh my god, you spanked me on my ass! I can't do this anymore! Fuck this! And she leaves. So this movie is about her being like, you know what? You got sexy pecs, and you got abs, and you got a big fat dick. I'm gonna come back with you! Woohoo! And then they date for a while. And that's it. That's Fifty Shades Darker. So yeah, this review is obviously not for my family or any kids out there watching. If you're still watching, look, I'm not going to be professional for a film like this. And I'm also not getting paid to do this. I'm having fun here. I have fun on my YouTube channel. I like to have fun. So that's why I'm going to keep fucking cursing and fucking using sex jokes and going fucking crazy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so getting the good things out of the way, because there are a couple good things, to be honest. Um, Fifty Shades Darker does visually look stunning. Um, the director of photography and the director and everybody involved with the visuals did a really good job making the movie look nice. Um, there was a nice composition, the framing's really nice, and the film actually lets scenes flow nicely. It's not a lot of rapid editing, things just flow swell. And I'm gonna be honest, it seems like most of the actors, while obviously understanding that this isn't grade A writing material. They're doing the best they can with the screenplay they were given. Jamie Dornan and Dakota Johnson are both capable actors, and they both try their best. And uh, that's it. Um, the rest of the movie is just pure poo-poo gaga doo doo baba. The film is just literally about the couple getting back together and dating. The only sources of conflict are so contrived. Dakota Johnson's boss is a guy who really wants to have sex with her. This dude, her boss, is Mr. Sexual Harassment. And then we got a former submissive of Jamie Dornan's character, Christian Grey, who had a tragic past and actually going around being creepy stalker to Dakota Johnson, and he, she has a gun and she wants to kill Dakota Johnson, I think, because she has a gun and she looks, she looks like a ghost girl. She looks creepy, so she must be a bad person. And then we have some arguments between Christian and Anastasia. And that's where our source of conflict comes from. But for the most part, the movie's just them going around, dating, having sex. And then the conflicts, when they come, are the dumbest things ever. The movie feels like a giant cartoon. And it doesn't help that the screenplay is one of the worst things ever. The sex scenes are mostly tame, by the way, like they were in the last movie, where they can't really show much because it's rated R. So they, like, it gets a little... Like, ooh, they're using, they're using things, ooh, ooh, oh, and they cut away, okay. And then this, it, ugh, it's not that sexy. The movie's supposed to be sexy. People are coming into this film for the sex, and the sex, for the most part, isn't good. There is one sex scene towards the end of the movie, the last one, where I was like, finally, I feel like I'm watching a movie that people pay money to see this for. I feel like I'm 13 years old again watching Cinemax for the first time. Like, I actually felt it. Finally, I'm like, this actually feels legitimately like a Fifty Shades adaptation. And that's it. But the rest of the sex sucks. But it's, it's really funny because I'm in the theater and I feel like most people go into this for obviously that, you know what. But people going in, but they have like a tongue-in-cheek feeling. Like they know it's stupid, but they're going in for fun. But I feel like there were some people in the theater who were genuinely engaged in the relationship between Christian and Anastasia. Because whenever something like, you know, 
romantic or lovely would happen, they'd like freak out and start clapping. And I'm like, you don't really care about these two. It, it makes me wonder how bad must your real life and your real love life be if you are clapping, clipping out, woohoo, when Jamie Dornan's character texts Dakota Johnson's character, I miss you. It's not that compelling. Going back to the screenplay, there's two lines of dialogue that I keep revolving in my brain because they're so stupid. I'm not going to not say them because the movie's so stupid that you deserve to hear what they were. Um, Dakota Johnson mentions kinky fuckery. Kinky fuckery is a thing in this movie that somebody says. And then Jamie Jordan says towards another part of the movie, you taught me how to fuck, but she taught me how to love. This this is this is this is stuff that came out of people's mouths in a Hollywood high budget movie. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even. But yeah, when the film's not being boring, it's just being a really contrived mess where things feel like they're coming out of a subplot of like a cartoon or like a lifetime drama, where suddenly oh here comes the the creepy girl on the side. She's got a gun. She's gonna shoot them. Whoa! Or here comes the creepy guy. He's lighting a cigarette, and he's going to burn the face of Jamie Dorn's character because he doesn't like him. Ooh. So yeah, I've said my piece, I think. Fifty Shades Darker is a bad movie, but I think you already knew it before you clicked on this video. Um, I didn't like the first one. Do you think I was going to like this one? Nah. nah. It's fun to make fun of, though. It's one of those movies where it's like it's really fun if you get a group of friends together and you take shots every time something stupid happens or every time somebody says something stupid. It's a fun movie to make fun of. If you really invested in these books, then I guess you'll enjoy this movie. I guess, if I'm being perfectly honest. But for everybody else, Fifty Shades Darker is not good. For the small demographics of people who might like this, but for everybody else, no! Fifty Shades Darker, because it's directed and filmed well, and it has solid performances for what the actors are given, gets a 1 out of 5. It's a nuisance, damn it! And that's my review for Fifty Shades Darker. Did you have fun? I had fun. I hope you had fun too. But now I want to know from you guys. If you've seen Fifty Shades Darker, what'd you think of it? Let me know in the comments down below. What was your favorite moment of the sexes? If you enjoyed this review, please like, share the video, subscribe if you haven't already, check out my social medias, and my Aussie page down below. I'm John Maffio, aka Mothman Jones, and this review is just straight bonkers. <laughs> See you guys next time.